What's up everybody, it's Bear with a Gun here from Sleepless Night Studios, and welcome to another episode of the Space Reverse Engineers series. Um, in case all of you were not aware, I had been doing a poll on what the next um, series should be to replace the Subnautica Below Zero Let's Play that we wrapped up recently. And so I did a straw poll, and here were the results, which you can see that there was actually pretty balanced... Uh, voting. There was actually a, pr a pretty good amount of diversity going on, but ultimately the Space Reverse Engineer series um, ended up being the winner, and so we're coming back to it. Now, obviously for those of you that remember, this is not a new series, it was just kind of on hiatus. So uh, we are bringing it back, so it's not a full, you know, like new, brand new series and stuff where most of you are probably familiar with it, um, but in case you're not... This is essentially a deep dive into a single build on Space Engineers um, that is typically done off of my Inspiration Series build list, but I'm changing up the um, structure slightly to the series moving forward. Again, as I stated before, uh, January is kind of my experimentation month. Um, so we are going to be working on the Igneous Class Cruiser this episode. Um, mainly because I apparently missed quite a bit on it on my last Inspiration... Or not my last, but, well, maybe it was. I don't remember. Whatever episode it was on the Inspiration series that I actually featured this build, um, I was talking to the builder and found that I'd actually missed quite a bit in the front section and stuff. Um, at least if I got the right build this time, um, because I actually tried to record this episode already once, and I got a five minutes in before I realized I was thinking of the wrong ship and I'd picked the wrong build. So, uh, I think I have the right one this time, hopefully. Uh, but, so some of the changes I've made or are, am playing around with is because of my change in recording schedule, I typically record my episodes between Monday and Tuesday if I can, and, uh, you know, if I, something personal stuff or scheduling issues push it back further, then I will do it on other days as needed. Um, but because of recording the Inspiration series on Monday and possibly doing the Reverse Engineer series on Tuesday, that doesn't leave me a lot of time to get you guys' picks from the uh, Inspiration series as to what builds you would like to see Reverse Engineered. Um, so because of that, I'm kind of changing up the criteria a little bit for this series, and it's going to be anything from the Inspiration series that you'd like to see a deep dive into, on top of if there's just something that really catches your eye on the workshop that I haven't featured before. Now, this can range, I mean, the Inspiration series can be as early as the episode prior, but just know that that might not show up until the, the episode after... Um, that week, so it may be the following week in Reverse Engineers that you see the uh, previous week's inspiration builds. I hope that makes sense, and I hope that's not confusing, but it's the best I can do right now. Um, until I change, and, and again, being in experimenting mode, I don't know exactly what kind of um, stuff I'm going to change along the way. But let's put that on hold for a minute. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end, but let's dive into the build. Now, I did a cutaway. For some reason, this ship is floating a little bit on its own. Like, I pasted it in with no momentum, but it does seem to drift. I don't know if there's uh, gravity mechanics involved. I'm assuming there is, or if there's some kind of mechanical, like, pistons or something uh, that are pushing it. It may, in fact, be mechanical... Because I'm not sure what this is, but it almost looks like... Oh, actually, per our conversation that I had with the builder on Discord, I believe these actually have retractable thrusters, which I completely forgot entirely to even look at. Um, so that's interesting. So, yeah, I think this is the right build, because apparently I have forgotten quite a bit about it. Um, <laughs> but... Um, so it may be that piston mechanic. That may be actually... We're going to definitely take a look at that. But that may be what's causing it to drift. Because typically pistons constantly exerting force on a grid. Um, even if it doesn't technically move 
the the object like you're not seeing the pistons move around it may actually cause the um, ship to kind of drift and wobble type of thing so that may be what's going on this is a modded build by the way I need to point that out I did point that out in the inspiration version but just to re reassess kind of thing it is a modded build um, <laughs> as is evident by the shield pulse that just went off there all right so before we do anything else just to make sure we give it ample time to really dig into it and look through it, I want to look at those um, those retractable thrusters if I can. I need to figure out how to get to them though, so I will be back in a moment. Okay, so um, I found it, and if you had noticed, I did put a little cut there, transition. I am going to try and do that a bit more and less walk through the whole build, because we already kind of looked through it in the Inspiration series typically, um, but I'm going to try and kind of cut more to the actual, air quote, reverse engineering per se. Um, so, but again, just kind of keep a loose expectations with me for a little bit or um, uh, for at least an episode or two while we kind of iron out the new structure of how we're going to be doing this series and whatnot, but just giving you a heads up. So we do have the thrusters here, and as you can see, there are the... Um, airtight hangar doors down here. Now, how these are set up... I saw a merge block, I thought, somewhere. Here it is. No, is that a merge block? No, that's a conveyor. Oh, okay, that's that's a modded block. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out is I'm also using the build vision tool. Uh, a mod, actually, so if you highlight a thing... It actually, it actually has to have a terminal. Sorry, I keep forgetting that. I'm getting used to it. So we can do that, we can peek at it, and then we can go in and actually uh, tinker with it and close it and whatnot. Can I actually do- Oh, I can do that without my HUD on? <gasps> you guys might be seeing more inspiration in space- blah, 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 blah. Inspiration in Reverse Engineer series without a HUD, because that's cool. Alright, so this is kind of interesting because actually what it's doing, by the looks of things, is these are- these thrusters are kind of in their own little pods with a hydrogen thruster and whatnot. Um, or <laughs> hydrogen tank. You guys know what I meant, I hope. So then I'm assuming in the sequence, this is the first one to retract. And then once they get within uh, the perimeter of the door, then these engage and will actually pull them over to the side, which is pretty cool. Um, now, let's test this real quick. Okay, so this doesn't actually tell me... Oh, yeah, it does. Wait, do I have access to the buttons from here to see what they actually are? I'm getting used to this mod. I haven't actually used the build vision before, so bear with me just a second. Um, we'll do it the old-fashioned way, unfortunately. All right, open, ha open hanger, close, rear hanger door, rear hanger airlock. Oh, that's got to be this up here. Okay, so close. Let's see. I imagine it's got to do some kind of sequence or something to turn them off, maybe? I wonder why it's not seeming to do anything. I'm always hesitant to push buttons more than once. Um, oh, maybe that's close hangar bay. Oh, maybe this is the hangar bay. Yeah, that's the hangar bay. Okay, I had the wrong thing. Hold on. Rear hanger doors, airlock, uh, open hanger. That doesn't seem like the right buttons. I think I need to find a different panel. Okay, I figured it out and it actually got a lot cooler to me because I was so focused on the thrusters and I thought I'd miss something that I totally did not realize how this actually works. So let me run down what I figured out real quick. So I saw this, right, this hangar door here, and I saw this over here. Now, at first, in the Inspiration series, the reason I missed it was because I thought this was an external hangar, that that's just where they flew out. I didn't even register that the thrusters were retractable again. And then, when I realized that, I was like, oh, oh okay, just at the beginning of this episode, this is where the thrusters are, cool. Then I figured this is actually the hangars. You know, this is where the fighters go out of, which probably true, 
But what I realized is the reason the wording here is tricky is because this doubles as a hangar door. And that confused me for a minute, but then it was like, that's super cool. The thrusters actually retract and move out of the way. And with them in that state, you could actually launch fighters and things through the back, which I was like, that's pretty awesome. So that's why if I've got this understood correctly, the hangar airlock is here. The hangar doors are the ones back here that actually seal up the rear. And then the close and open hangar bay actually closes and opens this section as this is the hangar bay, I think. Let's try it. If this, if I close, yeah, see, if you hit close hangar bay, uh, it looked like the thrusters started to move. Are they stuck, I wonder? Because they do look pretty tightly pressed against the wall. So I'm wondering, or maybe it's open. I think when I hit open, it actually was what retracted. That's again, what confused me was the whole open close thing. But whatever I did, I don't know what I did. It seems to be working. Um, the wording here and stuff is a little confusing. I do think it could be a more, uh, it could be done more Clear. Either that or there's timer there's timer block issues going on, I think. I think I've pushed the buttons too quickly. And it's starting to Yeah, there we go. It's starting to screw with it a little bit. So that's understandable. I have that effect on ships. Um, <laughs> so then there's merge blocks up here, which once they're actually extended. Now this is an interesting thing as well. Because my first thought was, okay, so the merge blocks are to actually keep them from wobbling as you fly around once the uh, thrusters are actually deployed. But then I got thinking about it, and I'm wondering if that's actually necessary just to have them function. And what I mean by that is... For those of you that don't know or haven't thought about it before, the thrusters are controlled by the WAS keys but on the grid that you're piloting. So technically having them connected to pistons creates a second or third or fourth or whatever nested grid for the ship. So I don't believe you can control thrusters on a piston or a rotor because they're, I mean, through the keys. You can control them, but not through the regular directional keys. Um, so by having it merge, I believe that converts it to the same grid I think, maybe, um, and then because the merge point is actually not like back here where then the piston head creates another grid still, it's actually on the parts that are connected to the piston. So that should allow you to then move the actual thruster, which is really super cool. Um, and this is also how I did this one thing here. So that's a cool little, that's a cool little mod. Um, somebody recommended that to me in the in one of my other videos. I forget which one and so I thought it would be a good choice for the reverse series because well you're dissecting so having quicker access to uh, information about a block is never a bad thing. Um, so I think we're gonna head towards the front and see if I can find um, some of the other things that I missed. All right, so I found my way to the nose of the ship, um, and I do, I, I will want, I, bleh, I can't talk today. Um, I did want to repeat, ooh, um, I'm gonna blame this on me, because it probably happened when I pasted it in or something, but um, I don't think those blocks are supposed to be all that bent. Um, <clears throat> uh, so anyways, um, I do have to ask that you guys bear with me a little bit on this episode. I know it's probably a little rough around the edges. Um, I am going to try and keep it somewhat concise and a little bit on the under, t like, up to 20, sec uh, 20 seconds. That would be a short video. Up to 20 minute type timeline. That's what I'm kind of, 15 to 20 minutes is kind of what I'm shooting for. And I know we're already kind of there. And that this one, I am not really pointing out a lot of mechanical other than those retractable pistons. Uh, thrusters, which was really cool, by the way. I do really like that idea. Um, the idea of being able to deploy thrusters is something that I've actually thought about for a while and never actually tried to 
um, attempt to build, but that's really cool. And now that I know you can do it, I kind of want to do it now. Um, but so yeah, I'm exploring some of the inner guts in the front area that I missed before. There was a lot of... Um, I, I'm pointing this out mainly... Actually, you know what? I wonder if this is intentional deformation. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Uh, that's only on one side, though, so I'm gonna say no, but I don't know. Um, one thing I wanted to point out here, though, is it's great use of space as far as, um, finding every little spot to maximize your block spike, uh, block sizes kind of thing. Like, if something's a 3x3, three three, but then it leaves a gap like this, um, utilizing the space is a really cool idea. Also keeping in mind the um, uh, thruster damage is a big one, especially for internal thrusters. So if we put the, I also have the build info mod on, if we put the overlay on, you can kind of see that red cone is still outside the realm of touching that conveyor block and stuff in front of it. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's something that I think a lot of new builders probably would forget about, especially if you're not used to playing with thruster damage on or something. But even like this, having this little thruster kind of wedged in here somewhere, um, but then having batteries around it and stuff like that, um, just good use of space. But I started to point out that typically I usually focus on mechanical stuff or building techniques in the Reverse Engineer series in the past. Also, Apparently it has a self-destruct mechanism in it. I think I think I remember noting that when I uh, did the showcase on it before. Uh, but apparently that's part of where that is. That's one of the warheads that would go off if you activated the self-destruct thing. I think if there's no self-destruct and I'm and I'm confusing it with another build that I looked at, um, I have absolutely no idea what the purpose of a warhead being there would be. <laughs> So we're gonna assume, pretty sure, pretty sure that's a uh, self-destruct thing. Um, but yeah, so hopefully moving forward I will focus a little bit more on um, the building mechanics and some of the other intricate little um, techniques and things, because that was predominantly what the Reverse Engineer series was for. This is a little bit of a... Oh, this is really cool. Um, so... This is something, yet again, I think I brought this up in the Inspiration series, but if, if any of you aren't aware of how you actually create one of these, um, all you have to do is place down a rotor on a large grid. I don't know if it works in reverse. I've had this discussion with a few people on my Discord server, and as far as I understand it, I believe that you can't do it backwards, where you can't put a large grid rotor head on a small rotor, I don't believe. But, at least for um, large grid builds, this is a really cool way to get around um, the uh, size limitations of certain blocks and things, like timer blocks, programmable blocks, things that having them be smaller doesn't affect their functionality. So all you would do is use a, uh, a rotor, and in the rotor menu, actually we'll just do a real quick demonstration. So, um, if you place a rotor down, and then you... Why is it giving me access to it? There you go. If you delete the rotor head, and actually, let's use our handy-dandy build vision and see if we can do this through here, because I don't have access to the terminal very easily. Um, so you can, there at the bottom here, there's add rotor head, add small head. So if you add that, you notice it kind of did something, but then when you go to uh, place it, now you have a small grid. Um, so obviously, if it's something that's not supposed to rotate, you would want to go in and lock like the rotor, um, crank up the braking torque, whatever, to keep it from wiggling or moving. Um, but this is really handy for using uh, timer blocks and programmable blocks specifically because they don't really get affected by being smaller, and you can compartmentalize and put a lot more of them in a small space like this. Um, this is what? Uh, 4, 3, 12, so I think 14? Off the top of my head? 
three fours or twelve yeah so fourteen that would take out fourteen large block spaces if you did it normally so obvious it's it's fairly apparent I shouldn't have to explain any further probably explain too much already uh, why that is super useful to do um, but yeah so I'm trying to look through and make sure give, give it an, another once over and make sure that there wasn't anything else that I missed um, this is also a neat idea as well of using the projector from this uh, what do they call this the console console block man that's gonna I'm gonna start getting kind of hooked on this build vision thing I think to be able to leave my HUD off and just look at blocks and hold control and then find out what they are the only caveat is it does require a terminal access so like a uh, light armor blocks and stuff won't work so bear that in mind uh, but this is really cool of, of having like two blocks close together. You could even do another one of uh, these blocks if you don't want to do a modded one. Um, and then you could actually have it kind of hovering over both by using the offset thing. But I think the idea here was having a shield readout because I think this is for shields. Shield controller table. So I imagine it was just to look cool. Um, so that you had like access to the shield information while you could look at the layout of the ship and stuff. Uh, this is actually interesting. Is this... What is this? Speaking of the, the uh, build tool. Oh, okay. I keep forgetting that this is a modded build. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, how did this happen? So that's a light armor plating. Interesting. Um... And these also, I believe, are modded, so there's that- Oh, it's got lights in it? Cool, that's neat. I didn't notice that before. Um, so yeah, obviously I didn't do as much of the mechanical of um, looking at a build that- like a rover or anything with a lot of moving parts and things. Um, this was a little bit of a two birds one stone. I wanted to revisit this build anyway and look at some of the front sections that I missed and the retractable uh, thrusters that I apparently entirely forgot about. Um, and uh, I also wanted to kind of start off the uh, reverse engineer series again, but it was a little difficult because without having already announced it, like, yes, we know we're doing this, um, I didn't get the chance to get you guys' pick of what you would want to see featured. So this is a little bit of a light, um, a light episode. It doesn't have as much of the intentional, uh, intended reverse engineering as I would have liked. Um, typically, you guys picked out builds that had a lot more um, either moving parts or it was a small grid that had a lot of little intricate detailed uh, building techniques and things like that that I could actually show off um, a little bit more of. But like I said, this was kind of a two birds, one stone at the same time. So that said, um, actually, hold on. This doesn't look familiar to me. What's, what's here? Rover Bay hinges. Okay. I don't think I knew there was a rover bay here. Oh, that's all hinges. Is there a door? Open rover bay. Let's start with that. Let's see what happens. Because um, I noticed this. So I'm thinking there's a ramp there. But I don't know why some things like you hit open and then nothing's happening really. Unless it's just really... Oh, I guess it just really takes that long for the timer blocks to engage. Um, that is the tricky part with some of this stuff. Not knowing the timer sequences and things is kind of tricky. Uh, because you don't know how long to wait, basically. Um, this is a neat idea as well. Actually, I'm glad I found this because... What is that? Oh, that's one of the modded weapons. Okay, I thought that looked weird. Um... I'm actually glad that I caught this because this is an interesting way to go about doing this. Again, using the small grid transfer type technique. Um, there's blast doors here to keep it pretty pretty tight to the, the wall. And with the added collision box update that we got not too long ago, this can be pretty snug up against the wall. Uh, while still leaving a couple of blocks open here just in case you, um, you know, run into a collision issue or something to that effect. But I also like the use of the half blocks here along the side 
to improve the overall um, profile of it so that it doesn't scrape or anything. This is actually something super simple that I myself forget to do constantly. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you're going to be doing something within a grid, whether it's a another uh, same grid size, transitioning grid size, whatever you're doing. Um, if you're concerned about it scraping or being too close to an, uh, a block or something like that, you do have the half block options. I forget about them all the time, so I wouldn't, you know, don't beat yourself up about it if you're going, oh, I should have done that on my build. But that is a technique that would work fairly well for something like this, because it's almost like using blast door blocks, but it matches a little bit better. And the problem with blast door blocks, in my opinion, um, is the way that they changed the um, mounting points. Uh, what I mean by that, I don't know if I can, let's see if I can turn on the uh, thing here. So one thing that's difficult with these blocks is that they mount to one side or the other, but then on the opposing side to them, they're shaved a little bit. Their collision box is slightly lowered, but you can't place a block on them either. So you can place on here, but you can't place it on here. Whereas the benefit to the, um, uh, the half blocks is that one side of them is still a full block size kind of thing, but then the other side on the opposite is a half block. So you have that clearance without having to change the profile kind of thing. You couldn't do this with the blast doors without them, without there being like a dip somewhere. It wouldn't, it wouldn't look right. Um, actually, no, I take that back. I don't even think you could do it this way with a blast door block because if the collision is thinner on this side, it's going to be thinner on this side and you can't mount to it. That right there is exactly the point I was trying to make and I went about it in a very long-winded way, as is my tendency. Um, but yeah, suffice to say that whatever side is has the extra clearance, it's going to have the extra clearance on the other side as well, and that causes a problem when you're trying to attach it to things. So sometimes the half blocks are a better option, so do keep that in mind. Uh, but with that, I think we're going to wrap things up on this episode for today. Again, I apologize if it's a little bit on the lighter mechanical side and things like that, and you... Uh, may not have gotten exactly what you're used to from the Reverse Engineer series, but hopefully as I get more of you guys' builds and stuff and actually can look more at things that have a bit more of those complex mechanical functionalities and things like that, there will be some, or, or just fancy, very intricate building techniques and things like that, um, we'll be able to take some more time with something of that nature but we're gonna wrap things up here um again i hope you all enjoyed if you did leave a like um if you want to see more of these videos be sure to subscribe and click the little bell uh so that you get notified and share and you you, you know what just click all the buttons just if there's a button just click it um <laughs> that just seems to be easier youtube has like a billion buttons now so just click all of the buttons and i'll see you guys next time <laughs> peace